Hi. All right. So I have my new Rock Island 10 millimeter. Clear. And you can clearly see caliber 10 mic mic. Single stack. No rail. Would have rather had the rail. But here's the thing about 10 millimeter. There is none in my entire town. Actually, that's not entirely true. There's some rip ammo at about two fifty, two bucks fifty cents a round. I don't really want to shoot that, uh, especially because it doesn't even really work. But it's beside the point. What I was able to find is the old standby. Forty Smith and Wesson. 165 grain, blazer brass, full metal jacket. And you're like, but that's not 10 millimeter. And you're right. Fort Smith & Wesson is to 10 millimeter what 38 Special is to 357. Not in the order it was developed, but in essentially what the actual cartridge is. It's a shorter version of it. Unlike 38 Special, 10 millimeter and 40 will have headspace on the case mouth. This little end of the bullet right there. Meaning that's where it kind of pushes in the barrel and judges where the whole lockup is. Normally, you'd be like, well, this isn't going to work because it doesn't have the rim that 38 Special is. 38 Special and 357, they just basically slam up against it and they had space on that rim. But these use an extractor that fits into that groove right there. And in reality, the pistol will load it up. That extractor will slip into that groove and it'll hold it there even though it's not, even though this shorter round is not actually pushed up all the way that it has to, that it can go. It's less powerful. Matter of fact, a lot of 10 millimeter rounds are loaded to essentially what 40 Smith & Wesson is loaded to. So the question is, will it work? Is it too short? Will it blow up? Will it turn this thing into a hand grenade? I don't know. Guess we're gonna find out. Chambers, that's a good sign. Hits too. So even just shooting 40 Smith & Wesson out of this thing, I like this gun. It is very accurate if I do my part. This is cool. And I just figured out a cheap way to shoot it. 